The second built-in object we're going to look at is the string object. So I'm going to define a constant message and set it to a string. Now look at this message dot. What's going on here? It looks like we have a bunch of properties and methods. But early in the course, I told you that string is a primitive type. Primitive types don't have properties and methods. Only objects do. So why is it that we see these properties and methods in this string? Well, the reason for this is because in JavaScript, we have two kinds of strings. So this is what we call a string primitive, but we also have a string object. So we have this constructor function string, and we can use that to create a new string object. So we can pass the same string here. Now, because this is a constructor function, we need to apply the new operator. And now we have another string. Now let's take a look at the type of each of these constants. So type of message, that's a string, but type of another is an object. So the first constant is a string primitive. The second one is an object. However, when we use the dot notation with a string primitive, JavaScript engine internally wraps this with a string object. We don't see that, but we can work with this like a string object. Now, just like the math object, if you want to learn about all these methods, it's best to look at the documentation. So simply search for JavaScript string. Once again, on developer.mozilla.org. On this page, you can see all the properties and methods of the string object. In this lecture, I'm going to show you a few of these methods, but I strongly recommend you to look at the documentation once, just have a quick look to see what methods are there in case you need them. So back to our code, let's change this string to this is my first message. Here we have the length property, which returns the number of characters in a string. This is particularly useful in situations where you want to make sure the user types at least certain number of characters in an input field. Or maybe you want to put a limit. You don't want the user to type in more than 100 characters. Now, if you want to access a character at a given index, you can use square brackets. So message of 0 returns t, message of 1 returns h. If you want to see this string has a special word, you can use the includes method. So does this string have my? Yes, it does, but it doesn't have not. We also have another method starts with. So this string starts with this. But if you pass a capital T here, we get false. So note that these searchers are case sensitive. We have a similar method ends with. So message dot ends with E. So you can see the last character here is E. If you want to find the index of a given character or a given string inside the string, you can use the index of method. So let's see what is the index of my. So my starts at index eight. We can also replace a part of a string. So replace, let's say we want to replace first with second. Pretty easy. Note that this returns a new string and does not modify the original one. So if we log the original one, we still have, this is my first message. We also have a couple useful methods to uppercase. Once again, this returns a new string where all characters are uppercase. Similar to this method, we have to lowercase. And another useful method is trim. So let me add a couple of white spaces here before and after our message. Now, if we call the trim method, it gets rid of all the white space before and after our message. And of course, this method has variations. For example, we have trim left, which only removes the white space at the beginning of the string. We have trim right and so on. Another important concept you need to know in JavaScript is escape notation. So if you look at the documentation for the string object, you can see in this table under escape notation, we've got these special characters 
So if you want to use these, you need to encode them using the escape notation. For example, let's say you want to have a single quote in your string. Now in this example, we have defined the string with a single quote. So if you want to have a single quote inside of the string, look, our JavaScript engine gets confused because it thinks this second single quote represents the end of the string. To fix this, we need to prefix this with a backslash. And now this character is escaped, it's encoded. So when we log the message, you can see the single code is actually part of the string. Another useful escape character is backslash n, which represents a new line. So back here, if we add a backslash n after my, this will add a new line. So save the changes. Let's look at message on the console. You can see we have a new line here. Another very useful method is the split method. So message dot split. With this, we can split a string based on a given character. So here I'm going to pass a white space and see what we get. We get an array of five items and each item in this array is a word in our message. Next, we're going to look at template literals. Hi guys, thank you for watching my JavaScript tutorial. This tutorial is part of my JavaScript course where you will learn all the essential JavaScript features that every web and mobile application developer must know. If you're an absolute beginner or have some experience in JavaScript and are looking for a fun and in-depth course that teaches you the fundamentals of JavaScript, this course is for you. This course is also packed with tons of exercises that help you master what you learned in the course. In fact, many of these exercises are questions that come up in technical programming interviews. So if you're pursuing a job as a front-end or a back-end developer, or if you simply want to have a more in-depth understanding of JavaScript, I highly encourage you to enroll in the course. For a limited time, you can get this course with a discount using the link in the video description. Click the link to find out more about the course and enroll.